Hi, my name is Amro Amara. I'm a resident solution architect at Databricks. Uh, my co-presenter, Sheikh Aktur, he's a senior data engineer from Kiwi. Uh, we both worked on uh, uh, building a monitoring system uh, for millions of models and also uh, different types of jobs in uh, uh, data pipelines. So today we're going to share our experience, how we build our monitoring systems. Uh, that creates quite stability within uh, our uh, big data infrastructure. Uh, before going to that, let me mention a few important points. 44% uh, of all natural gas and 27% of all the electricity in the European Union are being consumed by households. Uh, most of the gas consumption goes to for heating system. And sometimes we might forget also uh, not to turn off our uh, heating system when we are away. And that means we are uh, wasting energy. And this energy waste is not good for our pocket. Also, it's not good for our uh, uh, climate. So the question is, how can we prevent this energy waste? So that's why Kiwi is becoming into the picture. So Kiwi is uh, thermostat producing company. Uh, we produce a uh, the smart thermostat which is called Tone. It's connect, it can connect to uh, mobile apps. It can, uh, via mobile apps, customers can connect uh, to different appliances in the house, also control their uh, the heating system in the house. Of course, we're using uh, the mobile apps. Customers also can get different insights about energy consumption at uh, their house. Tone is now available over 500,000 customers home uh, in four different big countries in Europe. So to explain you how we do it, uh, first let me point out some important facts. We collect quite huge amount of data uh, from different sensors, including uh, meter reading from gas, electricity, and water, and also solar production. And as I said previously, Ton is not only a smart thermostat device, but also it's an IoT hub within a customer's home. That can be the Ton can be connected to different appliances at home, like for example, to smoke detectors as well as U lights. We also collect from those devices uh, via Ton, and we also collect customers' profile data, customers' information, and uh, mobile apps click data. We collect all this data and store it in, in our big cloud storage. At this time, we are collecting uh, petabytes, multiple petabytes of data. And by combining this data, we provide a service for the customers. The main service are, one, we enable the customer to control their smart thermostat remotely via their mobile app. Uh, all the customers can uh, monitor their houses as well as they can get advice and insight about their energy usage or other uh, uh, things which is going on in the customer's home. Uh, to go a bit deeper, let's, let's uh, give you a highlight using one of our uh, most popular uh, use cases, which we call the waste checker service. So for a waste checker service, what we do is we collect uh, at, four or five terabytes of data on a daily basis from all the customers' home, which includes gas sensor data, electricity sensor data, heating sensor data, as well as uh, water sensor data. And we do data curation, and then also we prepare the data to run our machine learning algorithms. And here at Kiwi, we develop a machine learning algorithm, and this every algorithm might have multiple uh, number of models. But every customer have different profile. Every customer have different characteristics. Every customer uh, consume energy with different patterns over the day, over the week, over, over the months. And my customers might have also different types of appliances in their home. So training one a single model and then trying to do a detection for all uh, customers might is not always uh, easy and it doesn't work most of the time. So what we do is we just uh, use each customer's data, train an algorithm for every customer, uh, train a model for every customer, and we do uh, scoring for every customer based on its, its own uh, model. And then we uh, provide uh, an insight for the customer, a personalized service for the customer. That means if the customer's uh, washing machine is not working or consuming too much energy, 
we give an advice for the customer to look at the washing machine and then we do have a follow-up service uh, to make sure that the customer is utilizing energy more efficiently uh, well if you are a data engineer uh, who have been working on a big data environment for a long period of time so it's normal that you start with some unstable environments and then you go through uh, uh, different patterns of improvements and QB has also passed through the same uh, case and well in 2017 for example we partnered with Databricks we created a very stable environment and in the following years we start using MLflow and Spark streaming we do quite a lot of optimization and we start also uh, uh, running millions of models in a daily basis and currently we have uh, Delta Lake and we are running Spark Tree. I'm going to explain how Kiwi monitors data collection, uh, ingestion and model performance. And Sheikh is going to walk you through sample codes and implementations. And how we monitor our data collection and ingestion, that's uh, what I'm going to go in detail. So before, explaining you more the details how we do uh, the monitoring system it's very important to explain to you how our uh, big data ecosystem looks like so as i said previously we are running uh, delta lake uh, and on the delta lake uh, we do have different staging of data processing we start from bronze and then move to silver and then goes to uh, gold layer Usually in a bronze layer, we do batch ingestion and stream ingestion. On a silver layer, we do data curation, for example, uh, interpolation for, in time, for some cases in time series data. And on top of it, we run machine learning algorithms and the scoring of um, machine, learning, machine learning algorithms will be stored in uh, gold, uh, gold layer. And from gold layer, we provide uh, insights for the customer. So we do have some lots of insight services, trigger services that connect us to the, the customers uh, via either mobile app or to, to tone device itself. Of course, uh, well, the big data infrastructure is supported by uh, advanced technologies like Spark and Scala. And we sometimes, in some cases, we are using also Python to learn some machine learning algorithms. I will use psychic learning and Spark ML uh, for machine learning. And everything is supported on ML flow for the life cycle of machine learning algorithms. And we use Java for microservice developments. And from the left side, as you can see, we collect huge amount of data, terabytes of data on a daily basis uh, from tone devices, uh, from mobile apps, including click data. And also we collect data from industries and uh, meteorological uh, information for every customer. And this environment also has, well, is supported by Docker, Slack, Jenkins, uh, GitLab, and uh, lots of uh, AWS uh, services. Of course, uh, this environment is in, in, uh, supports multi tenancy. Currently, we have four tenants. We have a clear logical isolation between each tenant. We uh, do most of the developments on acceptance environment and we promote our new ETL jobs or new algorithms into production. And we are using Terraform to provision our infrastructure. We are the GDPR compliance and uh, we do have also a proper CI CD pipeline to deploy our applications. And of course, as I said previously, we are using Databricks and then in the environment, the data platform is uh, quite stable. But indeed, it's also the responsibility of the every data engineer to make sure that the data which is coming in from uh, different sources uh, are in a good quality and they're arriving on time and make sure that uh, they are also running uh, properly. So for this, of course, we always need to have very uh, uh, well, a monitoring and alerting uh, system at every uh, stage. So even though you have a very advanced technology, even though you have a very advanced environment, 
you well the, the data engineers needs to make sure that you there is a proper monitoring system for every job which is running on the top of it. Uh, well, to just highlight how monitoring is very important, this is a paper which is published from by Google in 2015. And probably you have seen this uh, diagram in many of the Databricks presentations. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, to run a machine learning algorithm, you need to implement, you need to have quite a lot of uh, components. One of the biggest components, as you can see from this diagram, is uh, monitoring. That's why we are uh, really focused to talk about monitoring in this presentation. Of course, before implementing your monitoring system, it's critical, critically important that to understand what it can go wrong in your uh, data pipeline. So in our case, uh, for example, in a bronze line, the streaming jobs might have unexpected lags if you don't have enough resources. The Spark streaming might work for a function very well, but uh, you, you might not notice that if there's a lag or not, unless in otherwise you do have a proper monitoring system. There might be a delay of delivery of data, especially if you are expecting data from uh, third parties like QB. And IoT device might be disconnected for certain reasons, and you might be or get also unexpected data format that ruins your entire data pipeline. And there might be also missing values in if you are dealing with time series data. In this case, you have to not see it as soon as possible and uh, do the proper data curation. On a silver layer, well, similar problems might happen. Spark jobs might fail, uh, especially if you're using uh, spot instance where QB is using spot instances for some streaming jobs. And then this spot in, if the spot prices goes higher, then those easy to instances might be uh, gone. And you have to be uh, alert uh, for such scenarios and react as quickly as possible. Jobs might fail due to that problem. And as I said previously, we are also running machine learning, training machine learning algorithm, uh, algorithms on a daily basis for each customer. We have uh, five, more than millions of machine learning algorithms running on a daily basis. So you might have some model drifting either due to data drifting or something goes wrong on the upper uh, data pipeline. You might need, have also a problem on running incomplete data if the one of the jobs on the bronze layer are not completing their task on, a, on time. Uh, on a gold layer, uh, especially for QB, if we miss some SLS, it has a penalty. So we don't want to miss some SLS. That means we have to deliver results on time with the right quality. And some customers might get, you might get also a call from the customers if they don't get results at uh, some period of time. And some jobs might fail, like what we had in a silver layer. Uh, well, there might be a case or so when the customers might get wrong results because of the machine learning algorithms are not doing well or for some, some reasons. You might get also some later co network connectivity issues. Uh, how do we, so how do we build our uh, monitoring system and alerting system? Uh, to be honest, we have tried quite a lot of technologies, including uh, Elastic Logstash, uh, InflexDB, or uh, Grafana, with Grafana, and we, all of the technology which we have tried, they didn't work very well for QBC use cases, either they are very expensive, or they are very complicated, or they don't scale very well. So what we did is, we just created a monitoring job at every layer of uh, uh, use cases what we have, and this monitoring job's task is to make sure that we, we satisfy the customer, and to make sure that we deliver results on time, to we make sure that the outcomes of every uh, job is as expected. And well, the result of this monitoring jobs is stored in a database, and we present it also into a, uh, on a dashboard. We also connect uh, all jobs to alerting system. We put some thresholds, and if this threshold is not met, it, the monitoring jobs is sent a, mess, a Slack message or as well as emails. And this is one of the beautiful dashboard what we have at Kiwi, which is uh, displayed on uh, the company's big screens. And whenever all the developers are looking at it on a daily basis, when we see some unexpected pattern, we quickly go deeper uh, to understand if there is some issue to be uh, addressed. 
Uh, and for the details, uh, I'm going to hand over my talk uh, to uh, Sheikh. Thank you, Amro. Hello and welcome again. And uh, thank you for joining our this session. I am Sheikh Akhtar. I am working at QB as a senior data engineer. And in this part, I will show you how actually we implement our monitoring and alerting system. So just going through this sample code snippet, how we achieve that one in using the database. So at any given big data system, the first part is actually data ingestion. So you have you might have different source of uh, data data, and you have to ingest those data. And if you don't have the data ingested properly, then basically you cannot do any further analysis. So we have to place a really good uh, monitoring so that we know for sure that we have proper data is actually coming in time. And uh, that is the first thing. And based on uh, your business need in the bronze layer of data, you can provide uh, those monitoring in place. Here I show you how we actually keep this monitoring uh, for a streaming job lagging. So the good part of Databricks is that we use the bronze layer table as Delta format. So basically in the same table, you can ingest data from batch or streaming source. So for any type of different sources, we can ingest data to the bronze table. And on this table, we can also uh, on daily basis, we can see per hourly basis how we are receiving the data properly. So how we use this one? So if we look on the right part and the sample implementation is that first we fetch the data actually for a given date. And then we count hourly basis, how many data is actually ingested in this bronze table. And then we also keep running every hourly basis that, okay, what is the latest hour we have so far and whether we have received proper data for that last hour. So in case we did not receive enough data that is expected to reach the minimum threshold, then we throw an exception. And that means that it will mark this current job running as a failure so that we have a notification in place. Now here I show you how we monitor the daily data ingestion. So as you can see on the left top left part, we have this customer data. It shows how many customer record we receive for the gas uses and the electricity uses. So I have depicted here for one week. So as you can see on the last part, we see a little uh, less data is actually that and then normally anticipated. In this case, we, easy, we throw an alert so that we know just in time that, okay, there is something went wrong actually in the uh, upstream data so that we, we, we have, um, we have less record and we actually notify to this upstream provider so that they can look and uh, provide proper data. And in the bottom left part, we show how many records actually per customer we receive. And this is basically, we give a combination of the gas records and electricity average users for the customers. So each day on an average, how many data point we receive for the electricity and gas. So just to give you a bit more insight. So basically for each customer, we receive one data point for gas every hour, which means that in one day, there should be 24 data points for a gas. And for electricity, let's say every 15 minutes, we receive one data point for electricity, which means 96 data point in total for a given day. So in combination of these two, 120 data points we should have for one, every given day on an average. So if we receive less than these 120 data points, then we throw a notification so that we know that we did not receive the proper data as we expected, then we can take further action. And on the right part, here I show the sample code base, how actually we, we receive this data. So basically we first, we make the call uh, from the repository based on this date range. And then we group by this specific date and also the unique identifier of the uh, user customer record. And then we do this aggregation. And then basically we, we uh, make this uh, record and we also cache this information. Why we cache this information? So that later in the data pipeline, if we need to do the same calculation, we don't need to do the go and execute everything. We can just reuse from this uh, cache 
data set data. Databricks has a very good integration with MLflow. And uh, basically MLflow is actually to maintain the life cycle of uh, machine learning models. So how the model is actually performing, we can actually see that one using the MLflow API. And uh, from the Databricks UI, you can also see the full uh, different experiment, how the model is actually performing. But for our monitoring dashboard, we would like to have custom implementation. So we would like to have the custom uh, visualization of the monitor uh, of the model, how it is performing in the dashboard. And to achieve that one, we use this MLflow API. And how we use this MLflow API? So basically first we, uh, in the right part on the code sample, as you can see that first we get the experiment by the experiment name. And then we search for the runs of that specific experiment. And then uh, we can query further, we can uh, filter further by name, specific name and dates. And here I have depicted for the last 30 days run of the model performance, how the model is performing. So you can see that as the model is actually, uh, uh, in this case, I actually use the uh, mean absolute error value for the model performance. And as you can see, the per, uh, model is uh, the mean absolute error value is increasing, which means that the model is not performing well in this scenario. And hence, we can look further that what actually went wrong. To automate the alerting of the model performance, this is the following steps actually what we do. So first, we use the MLflow API to get the experiment by its name or ID. Then we compare the latest to run and compare those mean absolute error delta value. So if the latest run value deviates more than the threshold value here in case 50, then we send an alert notification using Slack. And on the right part, here I show the sample code snippet, how we are doing this one using this MLflow APIs. Now, so far what we have shown so is actually in the Databricks platform itself. Now, let me show how actually we integrate these two platform. So in one side, we have this Databricks platform and then for alerting and notification, we use Slack. Slack is actually message-based communication channel. So we use Slack in QB for our communication and collaboration tool. So here in the left, left part, I show you one uh, job configuration, Databricks job configuration, how we configured. So if you focus on the alert part, there you can see that in case of a failure, we actually specify one specific Slack email account. So this is like when there is an uh, error occurred, then actually this event would be triggered, which means that there will be a notification sent to this email account. And on the other side of the uh, part is like we are using Slack, right? So in Slack, we use one email plugin. What this plugin does is like whenever there is a message actually comes to this email account, then it forwards that email as a notification message to the corresponding one Slack channel. So here you can see on the right side, we have one database acceptance, which means that if there is an error occurred and if some job actually failed, so we get an immediate notification uh, regarding that failure job in this specific channel. And from there, all those uh, developers and uh, stakeholders who are, who are responsible for that uh, part is actually get this notification and then we can directly click on this link. And from here, we can go directly to the failed job on that specific run. And from there, we can see further that, okay, why the job is actually failed. So there could be different reason, right? It could be that probably we did not have proper data ingested or there are some data lagging. That's why we did not have the job uh, properly run and it's actually failing because it did not have the expected data. So what we do in the further collaboration, as you can see that we have 16 conversation went in this case. So uh, within that 16 conversation, actually we discuss about like, okay, uh, what actually happened and we actually come to a conclusion. So you can see that uh, the issue is actually raised just 12.30, around 12.30 and around 5.30, basically we resolve the issue. So within a couple of hours, basically we, analyze the root cause of the error, and then eventually we resolve the issue. So this is really nice 
uh, feature we have. This is how we actually uh, incorporate Databricks with Slack so that we have full end-to-end -end automated uh, monitoring system. Now, monitoring, uh, so let's say in your gold layer of data, you might have different SLS and um, you can have different types of SLS, right? So the gold layer data is basically to serve. So this is very important data. So if you don't uh, have proper data in the gold layer, then basically there could be lots of different things can go wrong. So it's better not to breach the SLA. So here at QB, we have three different types of checks actually to monitor and to validate that we have the proper gold data in place. So first one is on daily basis data. What does it do? We check on daily basis that, okay, whether uh, we have data in proper gold table data tables so that we don't have, we don't breach any SLA. The second part is on certain uh, gold table, we have the SLA that before certain time, for example, at four o'clock, we should have proper data in place. And that's why it is very important for us to automate and check this, that we have proper data in place before that certain time frame. And lastly, we also have a check that for certain date, whether we receive the data is above 100 MB, which means that it's not only that the jobs are running fine and we have the data, but we also have to ensure that there are certain amount of data is there. And otherwise uh, something actually went wrong. So we have to look further. So, so far what we have discussed in this presentation, we also put this relevant notebooks and everything under this mentioned GitHub repository. And this repository is actually to set up the Databricks notebook and um, how we can set up a project. So you can use this repository as a jumpstart. So if you're working as a United Data Team, if you're working as a data engineer or data scientist or a business analyst, and you are interested to make your project using Databricks, so just use this one as your starting point. And um, if you want, you can also contribute on this project as well. So now let's, uh, let's uh, let me tell about why Databricks Notebook is good for monitoring. So like uh, my colleague Amro mentioned before that, before Databricks, we also tried to use external monitoring system that is like ELK or Logstash in, in terms of also using the InfluxDB. But we had lots of integration challenge and the experience was not that good. And moreover, if we have an external monitoring system, which means that there is also maintenance overhead. So you have to keep maintaining that external monitoring system up and running. So to simplify the approach, we use the Databricks for monitoring as well. Why? Because all of our uh, ETL pipelines, what we have and all the machine learning model, training as well productionizing, everything we do using Databricks. So that's why it is better to have also the monitoring system just be nearby also where your main business logic, main implementation is there. So you can also use all of these uh, APIs, for example, the ML4 APIs, to monitor the model performance and everything under one single umbrella. The key takeaways for this session. So the biggest part of building a monitoring system is to knowing what could go wrong and where it is going wrong and how fast we can analyze the root cause and how fast we can take proper necessary steps. Secondly, adding unnecessary metrics on your dashboard actually adds more confusion. It doesn't add any extra value, but it's just an overhead. So to reduce those uh, confusion, you have to be very clear. You have to know very well that what is really needed for your business and add those metrics accordingly on the dashboard. Building a monitoring dashboard should be the same part of your development lifecycle. For example, if you are developing a new feature, then your monitoring and alerting part should be also part of the same development uh, life cycle. And lastly, Databricks is really nice unified data 
and AI solution. And it can be also used actually as a monitoring platform. If you have any question, please reach us via the chat box. Thank you for joining our session. We hope you like it.